Samuel, you have returned sooner than I expected. How are things in Wales? Is Eleanor well? Yes, she's quite well. I gave her your letter. Thank you, Samuel. I can hear uncertainty in your voice. Has something gone wrong? I'm afraid it has, my dear. Bates, you tell Samuel. I do not want to speak about it myself. Yes, madam. First, about Sir Robert. He went away the night you left for Wales, sir. Just before he left, he told me he had to go to Ashbury on an urgent matter. I know. I spoke with him about it. Did something happen in the sanatorium? Unfortunately, sir, I do not know. Sir Robert did not return home that night. In fact, we have had no news of him since then. Maybe he had to stay there. He told me he had a lot of work. That is what we thought, too. But the head nurse told us he left the gates of Ashbury just before midnight. Hmm. That's strange indeed. He would often stay at the sanatorium for several days in a row. But he would always let us know. We do not know what could have happened. Bates, do not speak like this. I'm sorry, madam. I did not mean it that way. We'll wait until this evening and then call the sanatorium. Maybe Robert will have returned by then. Bates, you started to say, first, about Sir Robert. Is there anything I should know? Yes, sir. I just don't know if I can speak about it in front of madam. Oh, go ahead, Bates. The thought is inevitable anyway. All right, then. Detective Collier showed up this morning. I thought he had come because of Henry's drowning. But I was mistaken. Someone from the village found a body of a boy in the woods. Collier came here to inform us only. This time he spared us his questions. A body of a boy? What happened to him? Detective Collier suggested that the boy had been killed by the wolves. Did he mention the place where it happened? No, I did not want to ask him about anything. Oh, I understand. Too much evil has come to us within the last two days. Do not know what is going on, Samuel. Now please excuse me. I do not want to talk about this any longer. Yes, I understand. I'll probably go to my room. I lit up your fireplace already this morning, sir. It's very cold today. Robert said something about a runaway patient before he left. Robert. And that boy. Indeed, some very strange things have been happening around here lately. Morris, do you have a moment? Sure. Morris, what do you know about that dead boy they found in the woods? Me? I don't know anything about it. But I'll tell you this. Some pretty weird things have been happening around here lately. Some damn strange things indeed. I will go then. All right, sir. It's empty.
Master Gordon, have you heard what happened? Yes, I have. Poor boy. And I was so mean to him. I hope someone kills that beast of a wolf real soon. I'll hang its stuffed coat above the door. You can count on that. How do you know it was a wolf? Well, what else could it be? It was a wolf, that's for sure. Maybe. There's no reason to talk. I need to talk to you. Go ahead, but make it quick. Have you heard what happened? Yeah, it's terrible. You know, I don't get distressed easily. But this boy, I feel sorry for him. They found him torn to pieces. Those damn beastly wolves. I'd like to see traps set all over the place. And shoot whatever the traps don't take care of. Where did it happen? Close to the old mines, right around that bloody altar. Stonering? Yes, there. That place is haunted, that's for sure. It was once the sacred ritual place of the druid wizards. It's an evil place. Poor little Vic. Donary. I used to play there as a child, too. I should go have a look around there. Shop is closed. From Willow Creek, I set my steps towards the dark woods at the edge of our manor. My thoughts were with the ritual place of the ancient druids, Stonering. Mr. Gordon, may I ask what you are doing here? Why have you come to this place? I heard what happened, and I wanted to see for myself. I don't like what's been happening at all. You don't mind, do you? No, it's all right, as long as you do not impede my investigation. Strange that we should meet again at a place where a tragedy is occurred, don't you think? No, I don't. I'm trying to understand what is going on here. Just like you. This is police work, Mr. Gordon. Things have been getting more and more complicated recently, and I don't need more added confusion. No offense intended. None taken. I quite understand. Can you at least describe to me what happened? Oh, well, since you've come this far, I suppose I should tell you what I know. But first, you tell me what you already know, so I'm not wasting my time. I only know that they found the body of a young boy here, and it appears that he was killed by wolves. Then you know almost all that I do. There is not much more I can add to that. The boy probably wandered too far from the woods last night. Very imprudent. When the wolves attacked him, he was trying to escape. Unfortunately, the furious beasts got to the unlucky land. You know the rest. Don't you find it odd that the blood stains are only on that big stone in the middle? I'd say the boy was trying to run to a higher place. But it was no help. That's all I'm willing to tell you. Gordon, I don't want you to speak about this with anyone else. Because people know way too much already, and I don't want to be having to be scary tall stories. I'll keep it to myself. Good. I need to reflect on a couple of matters. Of course. Would you mind if I had a look around here? What makes you so interested in all this? You wouldn't happen to know anything I don't, would you? Well, I'm not quite sure. You would tell me if that were the case, right? Certainly. 
do whatever you want here. I have no reason to ask you to leave. Have you found out anything new about Henry's death? Yes, a new fact has come to light that has made things clearer to me. I was just about to close the case, but then I spoke with the pathologist. Dr. Herman? It seems that Mr. Scanton did not die by suffocation, or drowning, for that matter. How did he die, then? Herman has not been able to determine the exact cause yet. He has not arrived at a conclusive assessment yet, so I gave him some more time. What's certain, though, is that Stanton's lungs were not full of water, as is common with drowning. You see what this could mean if it were confirmed. Not quite detected. It would mean that he died somewhere else, and his body was kept and dumped into the fountain. Another murder, then? Doubtless, should Herman confirm his theory. I will not tell you anything else. You have more than necessary already. I would, however, like to ask you something. Just a routine, you see, Gordon? Yes, go ahead. I have only one question. Where were you yesterday at about this time? Well, if you must know, I was visiting my relatives at a remote manor in Wales. And what was the purpose of that visit? Well... Just a family visit, nothing special. Why are you interested? Just a routine question, Gordon. But that's all for now. All right. So much blood. So this is where little Vic died. Blood on the stone hasn't even dried yet. The plant that's clinging to it looks burnt. A wind chime made of metal strips and iron fragments. Another symbol. I should make a drawing of it. One of three men here is that form a triangle around the altar. The stones may have played a role in the druid's rituals. There are many such as these in the forest. Green fern. A small piece of cloth is sticking from under the leaves. The detective probably doesn't know about it. I'll pick it up now. Polly would see I found something. I've got to distract him somehow. One of the many stones around the altar. Perhaps they were once used to form a circle around the altar. The third stone in the triangle. writing something in his notebook. This should keep the detective busy for a while. Detective? Yes? I have had a look around this place, and I've noticed something. You might be interested in this. Yes, I'm listening. There is a symbol of some sort over there on that big stone to the left. Yes, I've seen it. It could have been here for years, maybe even longer. 
Oh, I don't think so. Hmm. Where do you see that? Well, the paint is very bright, and also, I have seen a similar symbol before. Really? Where? Not exactly like this one, but quite similar. In fact, I have seen two different symbols. The first one on the old tower of our castle. And I noticed another one on the fountain where Morris found Henry. Hmm. That's rather strange indeed. But you can remain calm, Gordon. I know from experience that often even the strangest things sometimes happen. To me. to me, those are just old signs. Who knows? Maybe they were used in the past to mark something that had long been forgotten. There might be dozens of them across the land. Maybe. I doubt they have any connection with the kids. I'm not so sure about that. I found something that may interest you. There is a stain here on the stone behind you. I think it might be blood. Hmm. Where exactly is it? Right behind you, on the right. Oh, thanks for warning me. I didn't notice it at first. You're welcome. Here's my chance. I have to pick up the handkerchief while he is distracted elsewhere. The Gordon symbol is embroidered in the cotton. How could the handkerchief have gotten there? The Gordon symbol is embroidered in the cotton. I don't know what I could say. Samuel Gordon, uh, please let me in, Doctor. I need to speak to you. Yes, come in. I am downstairs, in the mall. Mr. Gordon, to what do I owe your visit today? Good afternoon, Doctor. I have come to ask you about something. Oh? Would you believe that does not actually surprise me? In fact, I sensed that you would show up. You have come because of that poor boy, correct? Yes, mainly. So, what do you want to know? I spoke with Collier about that boy. We were standing at the place where it happened. He didn't tell me much, other than the boy was killed by wolves. Yes, that was the original theory. The wounds were suggestive of an animal's assault. After a closer analysis, however, I can safely reject that possibility. So you have a different opinion? Yes, I have. The cause of death was severe blood loss and critical injuries of numerous organs. No animal living in these lands would be capable of doing this. Not injuries like these. What about an entire pack of wolves? The signs on the body are clear. No traces of sharp teeth bites, nothing like that. So do you have a possible explanation? I do not exactly know yet, 
but the boy was certainly not killed by wolves or any other animal. Of that, I'm positive. Tell me, when did you last see Robert? Hmm, some three days ago, I think. If you are looking for him, it is best to call the sanatorium. He is there constantly. No one has seen him in a while, and Victoria is becoming worried. I just wondered whether he had been here lately. Oh, he has not been here for quite some time. But then again, there is no purpose to his visit as far as I can tell. The last time I saw him was after William's funeral and not since. If you hear anything about him, please let us know. Certainly. Dr. Herman? Yes? Have you found out anything new regarding that strange thing you told me about? Do you mean Henry's body? No, I have not. I need much more time for that. There's a letter in it. Maybe Bates forgot to pick it up. I'll take it. Dear Father, hopefully it will be your hands that my letter reaches first. I cannot endure staying locked away in this horrible place. Therefore, I have decided to do what I should have done a long time ago. I will explain everything when we meet at our place. I know that you will understand, James. Father, so James is William's son. Why didn't Victoria tell me when we spoke before? He looks tired. Bates? Yes, sir? I'd like to speak with Victoria. Do you know where she is? Madam has gone to her room to rest, sir. I do not think she wants to be disturbed. Oh, all right. I think I will go now. I'll return to my work. Today's newspaper. I don't want to read it. Robert hasn't returned yet. Nobody knows where he could be.
May I speak with you for a while, Victoria? Of course, Samuel. I'm concerned about Robert. I appreciate your concern. I spoke with the sanatorium's head nurse a few minutes ago. She had no news of him whatsoever. I'm worried, Samuel. Something strange is going on. I fear something may have happened to him. I'm sure Robert will manage. Do not underestimate this, Samuel. He is my oldest son, and then I have no one left but you. I'm quite sure nothing has happened to him. Everything will get sorted out soon. I hope you are right. I cannot wait in uncertainty any longer. We must do something. I would like you to go to Ashbury to find out what happened. Here we wait in darkness and I have no one else that can go. Will you do it for me, Samuel? Of course. I'll set off straight away. No, please do not go in the middle of the night. It will be better to go in the morning. I don't mind traveling at night, and it is best that I go as soon as possible. Are you certain? The sooner I find out something, the better. All right, then. But please take care of yourself, will you, Samuel? You needn't worry. I must go to Ashbury and figure out what happened. Victoria, I found a letter in which James writes to William. He addresses him as Dear Father. So who is James, in fact? Oh, well, it does not matter anymore anyway. It is true, Samuel. James is William's illegitimate son. I could not tell you before when you showed me that picture. I didn't want anyone to know. This secret must be buried along with William. I understand. Would you please excuse me now, Samuel? I set off for Ashbury to find out why Robert hadn't returned yet. Someone has to know something about him there. The Ashbury Sanatorium, the place of laments as William used to call it. I know this is an awkward hour, but can you let me in? I would like to visit one of the patients. We do not allow anyone in at this time, I'm sorry. You will have to come during regular visiting hours. Tomorrow will be too late. Please, let me in and I'll explain everything. Oh, are you a doctor? No, I'm not. Who have you come to visit then, in the middle of the night? I've come because of Robert Gordon. He is the director here. Yes, I happen to know who's director here, Mr... Samuel Gordon. I I'm sorry, I forgot to introduce myself. Very well then. I'll make an exception, Mr. Gordon. Push the gate open when you hear the buzzer and go straight to the main entrance. I will be expecting you in the lobby. Thank you. Thank you for letting me in. Well, I would not have let you in if you weren't a relative of the head doctor. Yes. Actually, he is what I'm here about. You see, he hasn't shown up for a couple of days now, and I was hoping you might know something. I'm afraid I will have to disappoint you then. He left the sanatorium the day before yesterday, late at night, and has not turned up again since. Are you sure? Of course. I have been on duty every day. What time did he leave? Around midnight, I believe. 
He always leaves quite late. He has had a lot of work to do lately. Did he mention where he was going, or say anything unusual? Hmm. Give me a minute. No, no, I don't recall him saying anything special. In fact, he was very tired. Just said goodnight and left. I would like to visit a patient named James. Can you show me to his cell? No, that's not possible, Mr. Gordon. Can't you let me in? Unfortunately, you will not be able to visit him, no matter what I could or could not do. I don't understand. Don't you know? James escaped the night before yesterday. I thought someone had told you. No, I didn't know. How did he escape? He must have gotten into the sewer system under the building. It should have occurred to me that he might do something like this. Why? Did he say something to you? Yes, I spoke to him the day before. He seemed much more anxious than usual. But there was more to it. I don't know if I can tell you. It is a delicate situation. Please speak. It might be important. Maybe it will shed some light on the whole matter with Robert. Do you think it may be related? I don't have a clue. Please tell me what you know. All right. James was more anxious than usual, as I said. It was hard to understand what he was trying to tell me. But it was the head doctor that he was speaking about. He said he knew something important, but he could not tell anyone what it was. Did he say what it was exactly? No. It seemed to me that he was afraid to talk. He kept asking me to put in a word for him with one of the doctors so he could go home. But he insisted that I not mention it to the head doctor. He acted quite desperate, so I promised I would help him. What happened then? Well, James does tend to be very moody, but I would not say that he is dangerous. I have known him for years now, and most of the time he has made very little trouble. So I went to the head doctor to ask him for a temporary leave permit for James. But you said he didn't want Robert to know. I had to promise that. But without the signature of the head doctor, no patient can leave this place. He didn't agree, though, and defended his opinion quite firmly. It seemed rather strange to me. Such rigidity, I mean. Did you speak with James after that? No. I didn't want to further disconcert him. And the next day, he escaped. I cannot tell you anything more. I have no idea why he wanted to go back home so suddenly. You have been quite helpful. Thank you. Why would James want to get away so desperately and suddenly? And why didn't Robert allow him to return to the castle? It seems to me that these things are related somehow. That's all. Thanks. It's full of clean water. The water in it will be pretty cold. This is the way to the patient's cells. No one is allowed to go there at night. The nurse won't let me go to the cells this late at night. I've got to find another way inside. I won't be digging in that trash. It's mostly old papers. A young woman. She looks nice. Terrible weather. A sewer. Maybe the main output of the ventilation system of the building. A few beer bottles, old containers, and rusty cans. Just rubbish. 
A syringe. Looks quite clean. It's dirty, but not broken. It seems firm enough. Old junk destroyed by wind and rain. There's no point messing with it. Who the hell is that? Nurse, is that you again? I'm heating the place like I'm supposed to. Not one of those crackpots of yours is freezing. Don't you worry. The boiler is running full blast, so leave me alone. This is Samuel Gordon. Can you open the door? Who? I'd just like to ask you about something. Yeah? What do you want from me? My Uncle Robert runs this institution. Can you let me in? I couldn't care less about who's running this booby etch. I don't belong to the Doctor Bunch, and I don't have to obey old Gordon. Give me a break, and mind your own business. All right, but I just need to find something out. Then I'll be gone. Oh well, okay, what do you want? It seems to be quite hot inside. Are you heating at full power? There's no other way when the weather's like this. I'll sit here the whole day and night in this awful heat. Well, you can turn it down a little, can't you? Impossible. They've just installed this new regulator. It takes care of maintaining the rock temperature for itself. If it could also do the shoveling for me, I'd have one less thing to worry about. So why don't you just leave the door open? Well, that's another problem. I don't want the nurse checking up on me. She comes by to have a peek inside here from time to time to see whether I'm asleep or something. When the door is closed, I can cool myself down with beer whenever I want. I see. Have you seen Dr. Gordon recently? No, I haven't. I'm closed. Nobody ever comes around here anyway, except the head nurse. I last saw him about a month or so ago. Yeah, last month. It was Thursday, I think. No, not after that. But you said you were his nephew, didn't you? Yes, I did. Well, then it's you who should know where he is. What do you know about the runaway patient? There was a lot of confusion about his escape here. Having a clue why they made so much fuss over one silly loony. The loony happens to be my relative, so you had better keep those insults to yourself. I bet he can pronounce the whole alphabet, unlike you. Calm down, would ya? I couldn't have known he's your relative. Now, why I asked. You know this place well, right? Sure. I've worked here for some years now. If you wanted to get outside, how would you do it? Listen, these are some odd questions, you know. Aren't you an inspector, or something like that? You think inspections are carried out at midnight? So how does one escape out of a locked cell? Well, I have no idea why you're interested in this. But I don't think there's a simple way out. Maybe from the hall, into the sewers under the building. Other than that, I don't know. If you manage to get that far, the rest wouldn't be a problem. The sewer has several openings that nobody's watching. Why are you asking anyway? I'm just considering all the alternatives. Right. I have to see the cell from the inside. If it's impossible to get out, as everyone says, how could James have escaped without someone having helped him? But who could have helped him? That nurse, maybe. Or Robert himself. 
Robert's disappearance is surely connected with James somehow. I won't be keeping you any longer. Good. A few bottles of beer. The labels are not very damp. The bottles haven't been out long. 10 degree lager. I'll have a look. The middle rod seems to be loose. Maybe I could pull it out somehow. This must be the thermostat regulating the temperature of the ventilation. Hmm. I can't see any controls on it. It's probably entirely automatic. It's holding firmly to the masonry. What the heck are you doing, man? Get away from that window! Move it. Cold bucket. It's empty. A heap of damp coal. It would still burn well in a strong fire. Everyone who died within the walls of the sanatorium rest here. A gloomy place. The resting place of someone of a noble family. Great ends in stone. I cannot see any lock. The grate cannot be opened. It hides a few flickering candles from the rain. The metal doors have no locks to prevent just anyone from entering. May I speak with you? Sure. Can you tell me anything about the sanatorium graveyard? I have worked here for almost 12 years now, and I know next to nothing about it. Has it always belonged to the sanatorium? As far as I know, it has. We no longer use it for burying, but it would have served its purpose in the past. Many patients would spend their whole life here, and when their time came, they would be buried at the back of the sanatorium. But that was a long time before I started here. I do not know much else about that place. That's all. Thanks. The water in it will be pretty cold.
a young woman. I have no idea what we could talk about. I can't go back yet. Ten degree lager. May I speak with you? I see you have a decent supply of beer. What if the head nurse saw those bottles? Mm -mm. No big deal. You can see them outside. As long as she doesn't catch me with one in my hands, she has nothing to complain about. What do you know about the graveyard at the back of the sanatorium? Well, it's a graveyard. Do they bury patients there? Nah, not anymore. But I wouldn't go there if I were you. Especially not now. I'm no coward. But one never knows what can happen. What do you think I should be afraid of? No graveyard is suitable for a midnight walk. Especially not this one. You have any idea who all's lying there? Lunatics, maniacs, madmen. You name their twist, they're there. But why am I telling you this anyway? Go where you like. I won't be keeping you any longer. Good. May I speak with you? Sure. I need a little time here without being watched. Could you possibly do me a favor? I'd like to make a call to the manor to check if anything has changed regarding Robert. If you could show me where the phone is... I'm sorry, I can't let you inside. But I could call myself. Right. Here's the number then. I do not need it. It is in the internal phone book. Wait here. All right. I need to do this quickly before she returns. doesn't ring a bell. The cabinet is locked. It has a slot of some kind at the bottom. There are some coins in it. fits in the groove at the bottom. A little key was hidden there. Cantropin diminishes headaches. I still have enough of my own pills. Some drops. Not really what I'm looking for. Bethanol. Hmm. I have no idea what it's good for. 
maybe a relaxant, who knows? A strong sedative will put a person to sleep for a whole day. It took a while. No one was answering the phone this late. No problem. Did you learn anything about Robert? Unfortunately, Mr. Gordon has not returned yet. I see. Thank you for your time. You are quite welcome. It was nothing. That's all. Thanks. Built a little, but the syringe is full of sedative now. I filled it up to the brim with a sedative. I'll go with full dose so it kicks in fast. Now, get him to drink it. Mind your own business. I've got no time for you. Hear me. Not now. He would... Would be possible to confuse the sensor of the thermostat with cold water. The temperature inside will rise noticeably for a while. I'll leave him alone. make much noise. I could wake him up. The sedative in the beer did the trick. It's not locked, but I can't open it while he's leaning on it. I don't want to wake him up. A large heap of coal. The building consumes a lot of heat. There's something buried between the coal fragments. A 
An intense heat is coming out of it. This place is very hot. An old oil lamp and an empty bottle of cheap whiskey. Nothing useful. The only source of clean air leading here. There's an intercom system installed in the building. I don't know what message to broadcast. Work schedule of that sooty bully. He's off duty for a while now. Lots of old leaflets, posters, and newspaper pages. Messenger of the Gods. Sounds familiar. I wonder what door it opens. I'll take it. It's certainly going to be useful. little key from the notice board. Its tip is as sharp as a needle. A dirty, rough rag doll. A strong, sharp thread. The main switchboard. I had better not touch it. I can't see any lock. Something's missing here. That's it. close. He almost noticed me. I have to lure him out of that hole somehow. There is no other way to reach James's cell. I speak with you. Sure. Something just occurred to me. Can you possibly lend me the main duty schedule of all the employees? Do you not think anyone will mind if you have a look at it? Although I have no idea how it's going to help you. Who knows? Maybe something will reveal itself. All right. Here it is. Thank you. I'll return it when I've read it. That won't be necessary. It is already the end of the week. I must issue a new one anyway. That's all. Thanks. A complete Ashbury Sanatorium duty schedule for this week.
Dr. Smith, please come to the lobby. What could they possibly want from me this late? Damn, I guess I must go. I don't know what message... This leads back to the hall, but I can't go there. All the cells are locked. I've got to find James's cell first. Who, who is there? Who is th there? I have to say something before he gives me away. I am Samuel. I am Ralph. We can't speak for too long, okay, Ralph? I do know one Samuel, but not quite, though. Why can't we talk, Samuel? Well, we can, but we have to speak quietly, or better yet, whisper. All right, speak quietly, Samuel. I need to know something. Will you help me? I... The nurse says I'm g good. But n now I'm very sad. I will help you when I'm not sad, okay? And why are you sad? Well, because of Bubby. Who is Bubby? Did he do something to you? N no! Mr. Bubby is very kind. He is my friend. But now he's gone. And I d don't know where. Perhaps I made him angry s somehow. And what does he look like, this Mr. Bobby? Maybe I can help you find him. He, he, he's no animal. He's very clever and d talks to me often. And what does he look like? Mm, he, he's not t tall like us. He's sh short, but very handsome. Oh, okay. If I find him for you, will you help me? Yes, yes. I hope you d didn't get lost. You'll be searching hard, won't you, Samuel? Don't be afraid. I'll find him. It's probably a toy. Where could he have lost it? I can't see him, but I can imagine him quite easily. He may know something about James. trays and dirty mugs, nothing that would interest me. No water is running into it. The fencing is very strong. I can't do anything with it with bare hands. The fencing is very strong. Just garbage. Let's see. There's something in it. The head of a doll. The pin served almost as well as a needle would. Ralph's Bobby is complete now. It holds together as good as new. Ralph, can you hear me? Yes, Samuel, I can hear you, 
but I am still very sad. Poor Mr. Booby. It's no use. He won't talk to me. Ralph, Mr. Bubby is fine again. Here he is. Oh, that's very good. I'm glad he's here with me again. M Mr. Booby says he is glad too. Thank you, Samuel. You have been very kind to us. I must speak with Mr. Bubby now. I haven't seen him for so long. Hold on, Ralph. You promised to help me if I can find Mr. Bubby for you. But now I want to be alone with Mr. Bubby f for a while. Ralph, Mr. Bubby is sad that you don't want to help me. Ask him. <laughs> yes, Mr. Bubby says that, that he will help you too. Me and Mr. Bubby too. Ralph? Do you know someone called James? James is my friend too. He and Mr. Bubby. I need to know which room he lives in. He, he lives next to me, right next door. But James isn't home now. I know. Have you noticed where they put the key to his door? Is it somewhere nearby? Perhaps in some cabinet? No, it's not. Dr. Smith who guards us has got all the keys. Do you know that for sure? Yes. When we go to the corridor, he opens the door for all of us. But I don't think he's going to lend the key to you. He's very hard. Oh, never mind. Drat! Smith is returning. We had better not speak any longer. Maybe later. Maybe later. Okay, Samuel. So. The Doctor has the keys. How do I get them? The fencing is very strong. I can't do anything with it with bare hands. I've got an idea. I just need to flip the switch. No one will notice. I've got to attract attention somehow. I must hide. What is going on over there? <laughs> I hope I haven't hurt him. I think he's going to be all right. The keys to all the cells. An 
awful place. A normal person would not survive a single month in here. I should examine the cell before someone catches me. Disgusting. These are horrible conditions indeed. I don't think I want to know what's in it. Pages from various books, even the Bible. Some paragraphs are crossed out, some softly underlined. There's a hole in the mattress. Everything is in decay around here. A piece of paper is sticking out. I'll try to pull it out. February 25th. William must know that I will be all right. All right. But there is nothing, but there wrong, is with nothing wrong with me anymore. Just the voices. I don't understand them. I wish they would leave me alone. They won't get out of my head. Not even when I beg them. I paint a lot in the evening. It helps to drown out their whispering. The strokes of my paintbrush connect into a coherent image in the end without my thinking about it at all. It's as if someone leads my hand. February 27th. I must see William somehow before I get absorbed into this place completely. When we meet, I will tell him everything. William must learn of the evil things Robert is doing to us here. I have to find a way to let him know, to get my note somehow to the usual place. But what if my letter is found by Robert? I must be very careful. Luckily, it never occurs to him to have a look in there, not even when he's passing by. March 2nd. Robert didn't show up at all today. Ralph didn't see him either. That's good. That's very good. I hope he'll stay away wherever he is. March 8th. It's been ten days already since I sent my letter by the old warden. Why hasn't William done anything yet? I wonder if he received my letter. I don't know how long I will be able to endure this place. A couple of pencils and some blank sheets of paper. Nothing interesting. someone behind the escape. Do you hear me? I'll be back in a minute, and then you will have things to explain. The doctor has likely come too. I've got to get out of here before he brings someone. I don't really feel like explaining why I stunned him. A dark picture that James painted. Images of terrified faces drawn with charcoal. One of the strange drawings of James's mind. This drawing is crumpled, as if someone threw it away and then put it back on the wall. I'll try to remove it. Can you hear me? Yes, Samuel. I can hear you. Good. 
Can we talk now? You found Mr. Bobby for me, so you're my friend now. I like friends a lot. Do you know that? Uh, uh, yes. So, what was it that you wanted to talk to us about, Samuel? Tell me about James. Do you know why he ran away? I think he, he no longer liked it here. And also, he was scared a lot. What was he afraid of? I can tell you, you. You won't tell anybody, will you? I won't, Ralph. He was afraid of the head doctor. I too am afraid of Mr. Head Doctor. But James was really scared. Why was he afraid of him? He... He came once to... to James in the middle of the night. And they were talking for a long t time. I was listening th through this hall. Mr. Head Doctor was shouting at James a lot. Did you hear what they were talking about? Maybe. I don't know. You must have heard something. Only a couple words, really. Just a couple. Something about a William somebody and a castle. I can't remember anymore. I was scared. Okay, Ralph. Robert was probably quarreling with James about his possible return to the castle. But why didn't Robert want to let him go home? You said you are scared of the head doctor. Yes. Very. He, he's not a good man, Samuel. Why are you afraid of him? He often shouts at us, and he's very strict. But I'm mostly afraid of him at night. He sometimes goes around to our rooms, and th then something happens to somebody. Tell me more. Once at night, he also came t to me, gave me some m medicine, and after that, I was b very sick. He s said he would give me more if I told anyone. You will not tell him that I told you, will you, Samuel? I won't tell him anything. I don't know if I could bear more medicine. When did you last see the head doctor? I think it was that time he was shouting at James. I didn't see him the next night, and I didn't see him today either. I hope he will be gone for a long time. Why would Robert administer medicine secretly at night? He must be hiding something. Ralph, when James was planning to escape, did he speak to you about it? Yes, Samuel. Did he mention how he would do it? Yes, he did. Will you tell me? But I can't. That I c can't do. I promised James. I wouldn't tell that to anyone. Ralph, James is my good friend too. Do you understand me? I know he would tell me himself, if he were here. I... all right. I think I can t tell you. Mr. Booby says it's okay too. James has got a hole under his bed. Yes, a hole. Under his bed, you say? Yes, yes, surely. Will you promise that, that, that you won't tell anyone? Don't be afraid, Ralph. Mr. B Bobby trusts you, Samuel, and so do I. I go speak with Mr. Bobby now. He seems so sad to me. I can speak with him through the wall. I should leave before someone sees me. I'll return later when things have settled down. I'd better leave now.
anything, sir. I would like to ask you about something. Certainly, sir. Can you tell me where the old lighthouse is on our lands? I do not recall having heard about it. But certainly you do, sir. The decaying ruins are along the sharp edge cliffs. It is the only building in that wasteland. You cannot possibly miss it. May I ask why you are interested in it? Well, I really just wanted to know where I would find it. I think I will go now. I'll return to my work. I didn't know whether I'd find James on the cliffs. Something was telling me, though, that it was the place where he wanted to meet with William. This place looks exactly like that picture of James's. There's nothing interesting on those. Someone starts to fire himself. If it's really James in there, I should be ready for just about anything. First, I'll have a look around. First, I'll have a look around. Maybe I should have a look around the lighthouse before I go find out who's inside. My arms, as well as my legs, are tied together. He appears to be digging me a grave. I need to stop this somehow. Try to remember, James. I... I heard it so many times. When I was a little boy. Trust me, I'm telling you the truth. I am Samuel. William was my friend, just as he was yours. Samuel? I don't remember the name. It's all so distant now. William raised you as a son. I just wanted to go back home. I... I sent a letter to William, but he neither replied nor came to see me. He could not come, James. It was I who found your note, and that is why I have come. Why couldn't he come? Is he ill? He... William is dead. No, I don't believe you. You're lying. He will come for me and take me home. You have to trust me, James. William died a few days ago. They found his body under the old tower. Everyone believes it was an accident, but I don't believe it. I've come to you because you can help me find the truth. Me? There's no way I could be of help. I don't believe in truth anymore. But you know something that can help me find it. You must help me. I don't even know who you are. What if you're lying to me? What if you have come to take me back? I'm your only friend now, James. If you tell me what you know, I will help you return home. 
Why should I trust you? Well, you don't have much of a choice. Maybe you really are my only friend. And if you're lying, it doesn't really matter anyway. I will never return there. I'd sooner kill myself than be with those people again. You won't have to if you help me. All right. I'll tell you everything you want. James, I know you used to live at the castle. Why did William leave you in Ashbury? It wasn't William. It was Robert who let me grow old in that horrible place. He put me there against William's will. He told him that I'd be better off, that I'd only stay there for a few weeks, that it would help me. But you never returned. He convinced William that I was getting worse and that he had to treat me for another month or two. William believed the lies and put me in Robert's care. I still have no idea why he did that to me. How could he possibly allow such a thing? So, Robert was looking to him all that time. If it hadn't been for him, I could have returned any time. Now, everything's changed. I am here. And nobody, not even Robert, is going to get me back. I hate that bastard. Robert left for Ashbury two days ago. He said he had to leave because of something serious. No one has seen him since then. Neither at the castle, nor at the sanatorium. Good. Maybe he finally got what he deserved. Maybe somebody finally killed him for all his atrocities. I certainly won't miss him. Atrocities? All those secret experiments of his on the patients. He's obsessed with the idea that he's going to make a huge discovery and won't stop no matter what happens. Him who's mad. What exactly did he do? He injected all kinds of stuff into us. Some of us died. Everyone in those cells is a guinea pig to him. Why has no one ever found out? He gets away with whatever he wants. No one has ever found out. When I told him I wanted to return, he gave me a shot. After that, I didn't have a clue what was happening for two whole days. He knows very well that I could tell and ruin everything. I didn't want another dose of that stuff, so I ran away. I want you to take a look at this. I know William left a similar object in your care a long time ago. I would like to get it back. He gave it to me as a present when I was a little boy. I had long forgotten about it. William said I must take special care of it and not tell anyone. And he was very serious about it. So where is it now? Have you got it with you? No. They would have found it and taken it from me. I hid it in a safe place, right in front of everybody's noses. It wouldn't occur to anyone to even start looking there. Where? Where did you hide it? I don't know if I should tell you. William... William is dead. I must find that thing. You can't possibly imagine what I had to go through to get a hold of the other ones. Alright. I will tell you. It's in... The old sewers, deep under the castle. But there are no sewers there. Do you mean the cellar? There is such a place, right under the cellar. You can get there for one of the trains. Is that where I will find it? Yes. I have to leave now, James. Okay, I'll hide again.
is locked. in handy. It still seems to work just fine. Sewer. Nothing. No water. James did not lie. The secret underground exits. The air is barely breathable. What good would a fountain be in a cellar? Perhaps it would bring up the water from the well when the castle was besieged. The water here couldn't be drank as it is, though. It's like a swamp here. There's not a drop of water in it. This mechanism probably controls the pumps in the cellar. Surely it hasn't been here since the old days. It appears to be stuck. It appears to be stuck. My ancestors built this sophisticated system of sewers. There's nothing in it. The air smells awful like a swamp. Fresh air hasn't made it down here in centuries. It's rusty from the dampness. One of the rods is loose. An opening of some sort. Perhaps something is missing here. An opening of some sort. can't move it at all. The bars are chained and padlocked. I think that this is where the water comes in. The hatch is closed though. The water must have been standing here like this for years. It's full of floating algae and dirt. This must be where the water pours out when it gets too high. The steps can't be used. They're entirely buried in water.
part of some mechanism. There is so much algae in the water, the cogwheel hasn't even sunk. How can I get it out? I'll tie the hook to the rope. This won't do. The rope is bending too much. I'll try to stick the rod in there. I can't do it. The rod is too thick. I'll try to sharpen the rod a bit. That should be enough. This should do better. Okay, I put the rod in the opening. I'll use the rod as a lever. Hmm, the hatch has opened, but no water is running. Richard's acid has dissolved the padlock as if it were made of paper. The water has risen to the brim of the drain channel. It's still too far. I cannot reach it. An old rod. It will have to do. wheel made of hardwood. Works. The mechanism is running. The water has drained into the underground system of channels. The way is free. The water is gone, but its stink has remained. No one has set foot down here in ages. This place is so cold and the silence is eerie. My every step echoes all around. This must be James's chest. I have found it at last.
He had probably hidden it somewhere before the room was filled with water. Another key. James didn't lie. James's key. It's completely dark there. Some strange symbols in a circle. Hmm. The underground certainly had a different purpose in the past than just to keep the water away. Ah! My head. I'd better take my medication. I'm sick from this bad air. I'll rest a couple of hours and return later. <laughs> 